Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Deck Pasito. Ah, so good to be back with you guys talking about our next meme deck for artifacts. Guys, we got a good one for you this time. I know what you're all thinking. Life can be hard and I want to watch things die. Well, I've got you covered, my friend. This deck is a little different. A lot of artifact decks focus on killing the enemy and winning the game. This deck focuses on killing your friends and probably losing the game, but sometimes winning the game. So let's get started and let's head on in to I pity the foo. All right, artifact long haulers. We are here with the creator of the original idea for the, the uh, Quage Boy deck. This would be Mr. Rockman. Now, Rockman, he sent me this deck to get some info. He wanted to help me out. I asked him. This was a request. So, sir, welcome to the show. How you doing? Welcome to Deck Pasito. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Love the show. Thank you so much. Now, you, you, can I share where you work? Would you like to share that yourself, sir? Uh, yeah, I'm a writer on uh, Art of Buff. How's that going Since... these days? Is that good? <laughs> You know what, man? Um, Artifact is the healthiest it's ever been, truly. <laughs> that is what makes this man a writer. That is fantastic. So, let's go over the deck now. Of course, the big point, the big idea of this is we wanted to try to make the Pit Fighter of Koige a good card. Talk to me about your deck, my friend. Where did the idea come from this deck? Explain it as you can, and I will interrupt when I'm interested. Hit me. Sure, there's um, a couple things. Basically, you want to combine Lich, Bull Martyr, Pit Fighter of Kyoge, and you just go off. That's really the goal of the deck. Now, why Enchantress and Kana? In my version of the deck, I have Prelix instead of Enchantress, and I just took out, I mean, Kana instead of Prelix, other way around, flip that, reverse it, and then I took out Enchantress. Why the Kana? Yeah, I saw you made some changes. I don't agree with them at all. Great. Um, you want to put Lich in the lane with Kana, mm -hmm. and you want to snowball in that lane, and then you just put your 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 Ogre Magi and a green hero in another lane to go wide with uh, Dimensional Portal and then Enchantress to heal. Why did you take out Cheating Death? What were you thinking? Cheating Death is awful, bro. You can only use it in the green, and in mine, there's only one green hero, so I, it's a very, oh, very okay. risky. Why keep it in yours? Uh, I mean, it's just insanely good for your pit fighter. He doesn't die. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe the Cheating Death is better than a Divine Purpose. Yeah, because Cheating Death does survive through uh, Condemn, whereas mm -hmm. Divine Purpose can still get Condemned. I see. Yeah, you know what? You might be right on that one. <laughs> I don't really have an answer to that. That is probably the better way to go. But anyway, sir, I gotta say, really thankful that you made this deck for me and you got I got to tweak it a little bit and play it how I wanted to play it. But I will include your deck on the Deck Pasito description. So if you would like to play our man Rockman's deck, and if you'd like to read any artifact articles going up on our artifact buff, he is your man. Anything that you want to say out there to the artifact community, my friend? Uh, yo, all, you know, don't, don't 10 do million of you guys keep yeah. trucking along, okay? <laughs> Valve has an update coming out. <laughs> don't shut the fuck up, they do not. Nobody knows. They probably don't. But thank you for your time, my friend. It was a uh, pleasure talking to you, and thanks for the great deck. Now, let's go into my deck and see why I changed it and how to play it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are to talk to you about I Pity the Foo. Now, the entire point of this deck is about this boy, the Pit Fighter of Koige. Now, this card is absolutely garbage. I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea here. He gets two attack after an allied neighbor dies. He has eight HP, two attack. I'd like to show you a different card, if I may. The Hellbear, the Raging Hellbear, Rampaging Hellbear, he gets four attack at the end of every round for doing literally nothing, existing. He gets four, he gets double for simply being. Not only that, but he's a green card. He might only have three HP, but there's so many cards in the green deck that allow you to uh, buff up things HP. And in blue, low HP isn't a problem, okay? He's awful. The Pit Fighter from Koige is absolutely atrocious, unless you're playing this deck. And let's go through why. First things first, we have to talk about our heroes. We got Debo. 
Debbie the Cunning, one of my favorite voices in the entire game. If I wasn't married, I'd have a blow-up doll of Debbie, not one that I would have sex with, one that I would simply hold. Uh, I guess that's a pillow. One of those pillows, I don't do that kind of shit. It weirds me out, I'm not into it. But, if I did, it would be Debo. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Debbie is not the greatest card in the world, but in this deck, I actually like her a lot. Why? No accident. No accident to me is a really fun card for this deck because getting that three damage is on any unit. Now, every single one of these cards that we have will have a theme to it, and that theme is die. We want to kill our own deck around this Koige boy as much as possible, but Debbie... Out of all the shitty cards, because, you know, every one of the colors has these really bad cards, she is actually the best. Tower damage with Meticulous Planner, Continuous Effect, does extra damage to Tower, does extra damage to Heroes, kind of nice. But the No Accent is really not that bad. And getting her in early with some free Tower hits, actually really good. Part of this deck, what makes it good is things dying, and Debbie's low health actually complements that a lot, more so than other black heroes. So, we put Debbie out first. Now you might be wondering yourself, you have Prelix, which has 5 HP, you have Debbie, which has 5 HP, and you're putting them out in the first wave. Are you stupid? The, qu the answer is yes, but at the same time, that's kind of the whole point of the deck. If we can get the ball rolling without these two dying early, we make ourselves a pretty easy and fun win condition. Of course, if both these two die early, is it bad? It ain't great, but it's not that bad either because that means that other things have lived and we can move around those things that also lived. Not only that, but we have a few ways to make sure these two low HP heroes aren't taken out so quick. So. Uh, Ogre Magi, not too much to talk about with Ogre Magi. Of course, he's in there for Ignite is a great skill to make sure we don't get outspread on our boards and give us something to deal with those high armor carries from red decks that are so apparent. But, and not only that, of course, multiplying, we have a lot of low mana cards in this deck. And if you have an Ogre, you want to use those blue cards in that Ogre lane, you get even more. And that is very strong with what we're playing with. Let's go ahead and check out our boy Omni Knight. Now, Omni Knight is our only green. I'm going to splash a green in this deck. You might be wondering why. Because our boy from Koi needs some love. He's going to get that damage. It's going to take us a long time to get that damage, but he's got to live. And Omni Knight's signature ability always goes great with a lot of creeps. Two regeneration for the entire lane. Not only that, but you're keeping your boy from Koi alive. Eight HP seems like a lot. It is okay in the early game. Mid game, late game don't mean shit. So we got to have other ways to buff him up. And last but not least, the star hero of the show, we've got Lich. Why is Lich good in this deck? Gentlemen, it's the sacrifice. Sacrifice allows us to kill any of our allied creeps. Very good for our boy from Koi. But in addition to the other cards that we have, makes it super good. Especially with something that Omni Knight's bringing to the table get to in a little bit so let's go through the deck diabolical revelation this one's no surprise does two damage two cards another way for us to kill creeps typically you're going to see this paired up with a kana to make sure that you get those dogs this time we're pairing it up with prelix because we want to kill things with the boy from koi as much as possible card draw very good in this deck of course it is a worthless deck without getting the pit fighter so we want to be able to try to do that however be a little careful try to use this one actually in the early game a lot of times Times with Diabolical Revelation, you're gonna save that for the mid game, the late game, because you have a Kana on your team. You wanna get the doggies, you wanna get the big spread. We're not looking for a big spread. We're looking to literally just kill things and draw cards. So use this a lot earlier than you would use it in a Kana deck. Number two, Cunning Plan. As you guys know, we have these two very low HP heroes, five and five. We don't want them to die, so we want to make sure that we have some kind of plan to make them get out of that circumstance. Not only that, a bonus, you get to draw a card as well. Such a great card for all blue decks, but especially in this one, you can't play without it. Next up, the Vool Martyr. I told you boys, Omni Knight was bringing a buddy that would make all this make sense. Lich sacrificing the Vool Martyr. Not only do you get to buff up your boy from Koi, with the sacrifice. You also give everyone in the lane one more attack and one more health if Lich eats that bad boy. Such a decent combo for this deck. I know, you're saying to yourself, that's, you're doing a lot of work to get three damage. Yes. Yes, yes we are. That is literally the point of the deck. It is stupid. It is not a good deck. 
but it is fun. Let's go on to Compel. Compel, of course, another way for our little HP heroes to survive. Get those things away from you. Draw another card. You're seeing a pattern here. We want to keep people alive at some times, kill them at other times, but no matter what, we want them to draw a card. It's important. Ignite, talked about that. Always good. Signature card, no accident from Debbie. Pretty good for killing things next to your boy or getting those sneaky three man, uh, damage with only three mana. Not too bad. Slay! Yet again, we can use it on our own creeps next to our pit boy. But more importantly, this is for green decks. This is for decks that have a big late game. Always good to have a slay in your back pocket. Save these bad boys, all right? Slay is for the late game. If you're up against ramp decks and if you're playing artifact and you're still around, you're up against ramp decks. If you're up against these boys, you need to keep these slays for those big quarrels, those big uh, dinosaurs. Take them out in the late. People have put their entire strategy around putting down these monsters. If you can take them out early, they've got nothing. So save these slaves, okay? Dimensional portal, never a bad thing, especially in this deck, very strong. We want to make more creeps around the Koige Boyge. It's very strong if we can get it on the edge of that Koige Boyge. And of course we have Ogre Magi, which makes this card absolutely ridiculous if he is able to copy it. Uh, gets real out of control. The King Folk Turret. I love this one so much. Two piercing damage, always a good way to deal with those high armor red heroes that you're gonna be running into with the Ignite and the King Folk Turret. But more importantly, another way for us to kill more of our own people. We're always killing our own people in this deck, all right? I pity the fool who tries to come against my Suicide Squad. And of course, the God himself, the Pit fighter of Koige, a dapper gentleman who is ready to kick some ass, but it's gonna take some time. Now, in this deck, it is no most important that we get this boy out on the field. I know you wanna save him for that perfect situation, but if you got anything that looks like it can get him some damage, get it early, because he's gonna passively get that damage. You do not wanna throw this guy out at six, seven, eight mana. He has got to go out as soon as you get him and just figure it out. He's gotta get that damage, all right? If you have some kind of, you know, uh, Sherlocky plan where there's 18 steps and you have three keen folk turns in one lane and a bunch of other shit, okay, hold one on. But don't forget, you got three of them, so throw one down if you have them early. Trust me. I'll say one's favor, very integral for not only keeping up with all those creeps that we're summoning, but also keeping our Koige boy alive. Barracks, Kana, of course, we want more creeps, we want more victims for the Koige boy, so keep it strong. Chain Frost, this is your emergency get out of free card. There's gonna be a lot of times where maybe you're getting spread out, maybe you need the initiation. Chain Frost is a great card. Very strong in the competitive scene. I would definitely keep this one. Don't lose the Lich. Also a bonus for Lich. I mean, we're really looking for Lich for sacrifice, but this is the good shit. Steam Cannon. Do you have a black deck? Does it not have Steam Cannon? You're probably fucking up. Steam Cannon is the jam. Two of these bad boys down, goes through armor dealing eight damage. That's gonna kill anybody but your strongest red hero. Three of these will kill a very strong red hero, even with a time of triumph. I can't tell you how many games I have won because I had that four damage that's able to go down any single thing, and this is the best card that Black has to offer at high mana levels. Take it in this deck, not only can it kill your own guys, it's gonna kill very important heroes on the enemy's side, and it's one of the only ways that you're gonna win this bad boy. Divide Purpose, it's a splash. There's only one in the entire deck. This is in that very, very rare situation where you have a Koige boy that is so massive Killing him, watching him die, would break your little heart. But there are many ways that people can still screw with you. Now, remember, this is modify a unit with damage immunity. Sometimes people only think about this as heroes. Not the case. Two of the funniest guys you can do this on is your uh, rebel uh, little girl that swings around killing herself and making sure that no one else can die. She has a cooldown. Uh, one per round where you can swap out, and it's very funny to give her this, but doing this on our boy Koi, who has a lot of damage, is good. Don't forget, damage immunity does not mean they're invincible. If you're up against a black deck, a slay will kill. If you're up against a blue deck, an annihilation will kill. If you're up against any deck and they have a Helm of the Dominator, you will give them an invincible high damage. That's very, don't, woo. Uh, 
break your little heart. Jasper Daggers! There's one of these in here, just for fun, just in case somebody stuns you with something and you need it. Jasper Daggers is a great item in the competitive artifact scene. Always have one in your deck. If it says Stone Hall, it's in my decks. I love the Stone Hall cloak. Broken and very good for these two very low HP heroes. Slap one of these on these five HP heroes and they suddenly become a viable hero instead of an actual joke. Blink Dagger, highly important to put on your black heroes on this one. Put it on Lich, put it on Debbie, get Debbie in front of those towers, get Lich in that lane where he is needed. Also, not too bad on the Omni Knight to swoop him around and get him the heals to the people that he deserves. Book of the Dead! Woo! Let's talk about this boy. And I guess we can lump in Cloak of Endless Carnage. Now, we are doing a lot of killing of creeps in this deck. We're doing a lot of sacrifice. These two items are built around that, both with positives. My favorite being the Book of the Dead. You can kill all the creeps in your wave and replace them with zombies that do the same amount of damage. That's very good for you because it means that you can buff up boys like your Koige and give them like, you know, two, four, six damage if you're lucky and you're using your cannons and your guns correctly. And then you get to replace those missing units with zombies. Very strong, I like it a lot. It also gives us health for these very low HP heroes. Cloak Edith's card is the same deal. Of course, you get more health, but at the same time, you uh, get that added card draw. Typically, I'll only pick this up if I have 10 gold laying around. And that will just about do it for I Pity the Fool. Now, remember, how do you want to play this one? Well, we got a whole episode. Uh, the rest of the episode is going to show us going through a game. But you want to try to make sure that you line up your green hero and your black hero in the lane that is working out the most. It's okay if those two low HP heroes die early because that means that other things didn't die. Find out where they died, put out your green heroes, send in the black heroes after, and start planning around buffing up this Koige boy. You'll be surprised with how much damage this bad boy can get, especially against decks that deal well with these low HP units. They are always going to be killing creeps. Koige boy will be beefing up every time they do. So, have some fun with this one. It is certainly not a good deck. I will warn you, you're not going to get many wins with this deck, but the wins that you do get will be hilarious, and you will love them. So, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the game where we win an episode with this deck, and we will see you again soon. Bye! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Deck Pasito. It is a pity the fool. We're up against Gage in here today, a Slacks stream regular, randomly stream sniping me to get into the game. We have played against Gage before, and we have lost. He's a strong boy, but we're going to see if he can fall in our pitfall here today. We're going to see if we can rock his socks here today, ladies and gentlemen, with our I pity the fool. Of course, our big goal here is to get that pit fighter and beef him up. Now, it is hard to do. And is it good? No. The whole deck is honestly awful. However, it is funny. And we will see if we can get a win. Here we go! Trying to get in front of that. Oh! Love spending shit in the ogre lane, boys. There we go. Very nice as we knock out. Get ogre. He's going to get four damage anyway. I think we can do, of course, is cunning plan out our little lady here and see if we can get her a few more rounds. Making sure that this Debbie and this Prelix don't die in round one is pretty important. So let's see what happens here. Hitting it up and shutting it up, boys. Next up, not too many Karns. No big problems here, everybody. As we're waiting, we got Prelix rocking it. Now, our big first decision, where are we going to put this Omni Knight? Omni Knight going to be hopefully bringing in the heals, bringing in the chills. Typically like to pair him up with Debbie. Just because we want to put him in whatever lane that that Koige Mr. Fighter Man is going into. I'm going to slap him into this lane. Really hoping this thing does not spit on Debbie. But if you guys have ever watched my gameplay, 100% going to spit on Debbie here. Check this out. Oh my god. Luck for once in my life. Debo is going to make it because of that move. Very nice indeed. We do not have Debbie's special skill which would be able to kill this venomancer right now but that's okay because veno might die with this uphill ignite very nice stuff here 
if you guys are thinking about playing Artifact, one of the best things you can do is get an upkeep kill. That's a kill where as soon as the round starts, that person dies. I could have, if I killed him now, he'd be back in two rounds. If we do an upkeep kill, he's basically back in three rounds. It's the worst way for one of your people to die. It's always what you should be shooting for. So, Prolex, still kicking here. We really, I would like her to make it to next round without any problems, but she's not particularly going to die yet. Custom message, this is the all creep deck. Oh my god! We're facing a deck pasito deck here. Very scary. Oops, all creeps. Oh my god, except it's green and blue instead of red. But, still, any meme deck is a danger, ladies and gentlemen. Always be on your we're gonna slap our Lich mid. I know you might be thinking, why mid? Just because we need to put a little bit of action in there. There's a lot of things that are probably gonna die in that lane. I know Prelix is holding on to that last lane real hard, but her time is probably limited and I gotta make some room here. So let's go. Wow, look at all these creeps. These creeps are spawning like fucking cre- Whoa, that's a lot of creeps, boys. Upkeep kill. Oh, Dabo is out. You know, the luck could not last forever. It hardly ever lasts at all. Debbie is out. And the spread of creeps is in. Absolutely vile. As we are running out of time. The creeps are just getting bigger. And this deck does not feel too good against the spread. All we got is Ignites. Ignite don't do a lot of damage. But we'll see what we can do. All right, there we go, hitting it up. Some more shit's gonna die to that upkeep, so that's nice, I guess. No black cards at all. We're swimming in blues here, boys. Very not good for us. Very not good at all. Prelix is able to get off one of these barracks. And there's his barracks, so uh, we're, we're in some major trouble. We have not killed anything, he is killing everything. Oof. Could call out a barracks here for the long con, or we could do a dimensional portal and get a little bit of damage. Of course, we could also put down this ignite and fuck up both those plans. That ignite's looking pretty tasty, to be honest with you. A lot of damage that could clear up our second lane. I really want to put down that barracks, but that ignite, man, it's gonna be good. Also, doing that ignite means that I can. Ooh. I thought own compel cost three, so that was actually a horrible move, and I'm an idiot. The standard, ladies and gentlemen, let's take that. Great. Here we go. Not too shabby on these items. Take those. Six mana now, as we're waiting for something to happen. Could potentially put this ogre in the first lane and pray for another ignite. If I do get another ignite, that would be absolutely incredible, honestly. Pretty much would win me the game, I think. Getting that two damage in, and literally everyone in that lane has two damn two HP. If I get an ignite right here, I'm gonna be a happy boy, and no, it will not happen. Just once. I want to say something cool like that, and it actually happens. But we could potentially kill ourselves looking for the ignite <laughs> we have a lot of card draw in this deck very sad we could do it but i think probably putting a barracks down would be our better move. We brought some friends along. of course we could still do it we do have a chance to diabolical revelation it would kill only one creep but we wouldn't even have the mana to put the ignite down so whatever we lose to Gaijin again. Next round, at least we'll make some money, I guess. As 13 damage goes down. Our Lich goes down. Our everything goes down. Very sad stuff here today. I don't know. Why must he spawn in front of the only things that can kill him? I don't know. Very sad. I, will not I heal up there, though. Which allows my Lich to ew, survive. Just for one more round, of course, he's probably got something that he could spawn in, but I kind of want to force him to spawn something in here because it's not very good. Who cares about Lich, honestly? So if he spawns something in, I'll be pretty happy. And if he doesn't, I'll be very happy. And another barracks! Can't blame him for that. 
Well, next round will be good. We'll kill a lot of things in that lane. Eight damage here. And a lot of creeps coming in. It's going to be rough, boys. It's going to be this going to be tough. This going to be rough and tough. He got the perfect start. Didn't get the cards we were looking for to be able to stop this from happening. And now it is happening. And now I am sad. Let's continue. Double. Now I could have tried to out creep him here in the middle lane. He might have a lot of creeps, but I don't know about his damage. Let's go ahead and see what happens there. That might be funny. Or alternatively, we could clean some shit up in this first lane. Let's do that. We do have initiative, so if we get a nice little roll here, we could take him. Gajan, alert, sir. You gave me initiative. That ain't gonna be good, my friend. That ain't gonna be good. Fire! Does it get better than 17 damage on a tower? Yes. And look at them all die. All you got to do in this game is keep your head in the game. And you'll never know what you can claim. We killing them, boys. A Prowler Vanguard. A very nice move indeed. We could do a lot here. We could Steam Cannon and probably win the game. We could Barracks and ensure our victory. Or we can do what we came here to do, baby. We could put in the Pit Fighter of Coins! The man we came to see! The fighter, the battler, the killer himself! Jasper Daggers on top of our Prelix! We're healing, we're dealing, let's fucking go! Our boy has no mercy! Oh my god, who could it be? The Pit Fighter of Coins! Now the big question. Do we want to knock him out? What do we want to do? We want a party! There we go! Drawing more cards! Vool Martyr! Give him the damage! That's plus four, baby! Absolutely incredible damage! What's he gonna do? Nothing! That's about as hype as this stream's gonna get. The, the, he got plus two damage, guys. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Don't worry, boys. We got plans. We'll be fine. All of our heroes are on the deck, though. We could use some Blink Dagger, and unfortunately, we don't get it. Gonna have to get that TP scroll. Nice! You don't see the item you need, but you do see a TP. Get the TP for God's sakes. Don't fuck around here. A lot of creeps in that mid lane with that Predilix still alive. The plan is in motion, gentlemen. As we continue our assault on this brave world, we could Steam Cannon right now. I think that's probably a great move. Boom! Easier. Very nice. In fact, that Steam Cannon is gonna open up a lot of options in that middle lane. Boom! Oh, baby. Not to mention, we also have a Blink Dagger so we can finish this up, which is very nice. 16 damage there. Looking pretty freaking good, boys. Everybody's dead. I typically would TP her out, but considering that he has no answer in that middle lane, I think we're good. Now the big question. Do we do anything for our boy here? You know him. You love him. It is our boy from coins. Let's bring it up one time. Book of the dead. Getting us more HP. Now you might be asking yourself, why Book of the Dead, my friend? Oh, that's because we got plans, baby. 
Oh my god, what the hell is happening here? Here we go! You know it! You love it! What are we gonna do? You might be asking yourself. It's pretty easy here. Diabolical revelation! Got enough HP for that shit? You know I do, baby! Oh, but it ain't over, cause you know what happened in here. No accident today! Boom shakalaka straight for our boy from Koich coming in! And it ain't over. Because we got even more ways to play, baby. Who is, is this another diabolical revelation? Dealing even more damage for the boy from Koich! That's right, baby! He's feeling it. He's getting part But what happened to all your creeps. All your creeps are dead. They're back with the Book of the Dead, baby. All that damage that we missed out, we got it all. But we just have more power from the boy, from Koi. We're taking him out. We're fucking him down. Out of here with the Lich. And the power is in his hands. Uppercut the tower. Boom. At any rate. We continue our uh, walk down memory lane here. 20 damage. We're pretty much sacking that last lane. Two damage on every single one. The Quorum comes out. He is going to go all in on this last lane. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I can't blame this man for what he's done here today. That is an exposed ancient. That is good. That is strong. Unbelievable strength there. I do have initiative, but will I be able to repel all of his forces? Because that is a lot of forces, ladies and germs. That's a big group here. Very scary. I'm afraid. I won't lie to you, gentlemen. Daddy spooked. It's going to come down to this. Where he puts these heroes, it is going to come down to this. He's definitely watching the stream right now and trying to figure out what exactly... He has to do. He's gonna put the Kana in the first lane. Now that's a good move. Now that's a good move. He's gonna annihilate that first lane. I don't blame him. He is gonna take this first lane out. Or easy baby! Yeah! I ain't taking shit out today, baby. We got it all day. We got it all day! Oh my god! You know him, you love him! This game ain't ever over! Steam cannon up in this bitch! The party never ends! We're gonna heal this bitch up with everything we got! We're gonna blink dagger our boy Omni Knight! And we're getting the fuck out of here! Bring those heroes to the mix! It's all on this, baby. This is all we got. We don't have a chance. We gotta go. If he has Annihilation, it is over. But if he does not, we have a chance. This is all of the comeuppance. Do I TP to the mid and trust in the fighter spirit? Or do I go to the bottom and pray to God that I can save what little is left? We gotta go all in, baby! Two damage. The shot is ready. Will he annihilate? Only one way to tell. Activate. The shot! Come on, baby! Show me that annihilation or show me death! One HP! Does he have it? If he does! It's over, but if he don't, that's 40 damage from your boy, the Seder Magician. Whew. Big risks, big rewards, but we're going to chain Frost. You had your chance, and your chance is up. Bouncy bounce to the win. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it here today. Oh, you know it, you love it. Put the Bull Martyr down. Sacrifice 
the Wool Murder for extra damage on all the boys and uppercut that ancient. Ha! So there you go. That is the deck, ladies and germs. That is my version. Thank you, Jeremiah Lipinitsky, for subscribing. That would be, I pity the foot. Get that pit fighter in there. You spread out your board. Use that amount of healing you get from Omni Knight. Be careful where you put those black heroes. You want to plan ahead and you want to buff that boy up. Thanks everybody for watching Deck Pasito and shout out to our boy Gajin who uh, got into a game with us as well. Always a pleasure and we'll see you next time for our next episode. Oh, and of course, shout out to our man who sent us the original deck, Rokeman from already buff. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Have a wonderful night and toodaloo.